Welcome to the New Heights Show on Education. I'm Pamela Clark, founder and director of the New Heights Educational Group, and I'm here with David Smith, the founder of Silicon Valley High School, who has helped us get these podcasts produced and delivered to you. Yes, Pamela, when we saw the great things that you and your army of volunteers were achieving at New Heights, we wanted to get involved. We're happy to work with you to leverage the internet and make quality education accessible and affordable to everyone, everywhere. Thank you, David. We appreciate Silicon Valley High School helping us to get these podcasts out to the hundreds of thousands of listeners from all over the world. So I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. This is Charlotte McGuire, your host for the New Heights Show on Education. Welcome to our Thankful Thursday show. Always give thanks, especially for our children. Well, this week, this show will explore new topics on Common Core. Today's discussion will focus on Common Core high-stakes testing. You will also hear excerpts from a presentation by Dr. Gary Thompson, Director of Clinical Training and Community Advocacy for the Early Child Psychology and Education Center serving the states of Utah and California. In his presentation, he questions the validity of the Common Core test based on scientific and ethical standards. Why would we be given a test to our children that have not been validated? Dr. Thomas has even offered $100,000. Do you hear me? $100,000 to the Utah State Office of Education for validity reports from the architects of the tests, such as the American Institute for Research called AIR, or Pearson to prove and offer evidence that the tests to Common Core standards are indeed valid. Wait until you hear what he has to say about the cost of this high-stakes testing to our children. Right now, you might be struggling through your classes or even failing them. You might be worried that you may not finish high school. There might have even been a thought that you may not be smart enough. Well, the New Heights Educational Group begs to differ. We not only think you are smart enough, but with our help, you will complete your high school diploma. The New Heights Educational Group strives to improve your academic success through its tutoring services. To learn more, please visit newheightseducation.org and contact us. New Heights Educational Group educational resources to help reach your goals. Now let's get to the topic for the day. Common Core High Stakes Testing. Parents are concerned about the amount of time their children are being tested, ready for tests, and also taking tests. As background, and as a reminder, in January 2011, the United States Department of Education entered into a cooperative agreement with the Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Careers. What about readiness for life? The purpose of the agreement was to support the consortium recipients in developing new common assessment systems that are valid, reliable, and fair for their intended purposes and for all student subgroups. And when they talk about subgroups, they're primarily talking about special needs groups, autistic groups, minority groups. So they're talking about various uh, less than majority population groups. And that measure student knowledge and skills against a common set of college and career ready standards in mathematics and English language arts. The estimated cost for the work performed under this agreement with the Department of Education was a whopping $169,990,272 and $15,872,000 was awarded as a supplemental payment of what is valuable taxpayers' money. The Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Careers, PARC, Inc., is a nonprofit entity 
and project manager for the Park Consortium comprised of 14 states working together to develop a set of computer-based assessments that measure whether students are on track to be successful in college and in their careers. The states of this consortium include Arkansas, Colorado, District of Columbia, Illinois, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, my Ohio, Oklahoma, and Rhode Island. This spring 2015, over 5 million students nationwide had to prepare for and take the park test. Parents, teachers, and school administrators are increasingly concerned about the new park assessment or test and its impact on children. Children are getting frustrated with so much test taking. To supposedly help with students' performance outcomes, Park offers a practice test online. Parents are encouraged to get an orientation to the Park test, that is, if they have a computer at home, download it on their home computer and run their child through a series of practice tests. Now they have practice tests at school and practice tests at home, the high stakes of testing. Many parents are concerned that a significant percentage of school time is spent on testing rather than holistic educational development of their children. This holistic development would include such courses as creative arts, music, and classic literature. Just this month, according to CINewsNow.com, an affiliate of ABC News at a public officials forum in Normal, Illinois, parents, students, teachers, and others spoke out about Common Core and the new park tests. Many people who spoke said the park tests does more harm than good. Do you think so? One normal community high school senior said, this is transforming education into these one-size-fits-all standards. And also, the park test is not difficult, but it's very confusing. The question is, what are the risks, if any, to our children for this high-stake testing? Testing to Common Core Standards. I want you to take a moment to listen to Dr. Gary Thompson and hear what he has to say about the validity of the various Common Core tests and the implications for our children. Listen closely. We have talked about peer review evidence, and we have left a bunch of it in the back. I have made five folders about six inches thick with peer-reviewed research, which I, one that I've given to the coordinator of my evolution Common Core, and five others that she has handed out to uh, current people in the office and education in Idaho, and uh, several candidates who are running. So with that in mind, let's get going. The basis and foundation of everything that I'm going to say boils down to this. Nothing is common about the core of our children. And as such, today I speak to you as both a doctor of clinical psychology and as a father of four children. And speaking of a doctor and a dad, uh, this is my father uh, with my nephew who my father retired uh, six months ago as a medical doctor in the community after 50 years, 52 years of service. He did not miss one day of work in 52 years. I remember growing up, my dad would come up 
struggling students get easier items, excelling students get more difficult items. This is from uh, your Idaho website, and this is their description of Smart Development. Uh, it will replace existing tests and offer significant improvements over tests of the past. And at the end, it says it meets the needs of all students. In Utah, our stage test, we got generally glowing um, public relations. This podcast is brought to you by Silicon Valley High School, the world's fastest growing, video based, self paced, teacher supported, fully accredited online school that's recommended by more than 96% of students. Take individual courses at just $95 each or earn your high school diploma at any age. Check us out at svhs.co. As you can see, one of the requirements Dr. Thompson said for a valid test is that it does harm. So we have to be sure as parents, teachers, those who are concerned about our children's education that the test is valid, and if not, we should opt out. As a matter of fact, the state of Oklahoma recently passed legislation that was strongly supported by its governor, the House of Representatives, and the Senate to repeal its participation in Common Core. On March 27th of this year, the New Jersey Education Association reported that a parent movement to refuse the park assessment or test given this spring topped an estimated 40,000 students. That means 40 thousand parents opted their students out of park and in one New Jersey school district as many as 2,500 students refused to take the park. On a vote of 29 to 0, the Arkansas Senate approved House Bill 1241 which delays possible future use of park until the 216-217 school year. This represents a replacement amendment of a version that would have completely shut the door on the use of park testing. So please consider the following questions from the Common Core Education Without Representation website. They are great questions when talking to your elected officials about Common Core testing or park and the impact it's having on your children. Number one, what evidence do you have that Common Core test scores would, could result in higher levels of innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship? Number two, do you see Common Core's emphasis on testing as potentially harming America's children's creativity and entrepreneurial fields in which U.S. graduates have historically led the world? Or do you see this emphasis on standardization and testing as simply creating more individuals who are good at taking tests, like the students in some Asian countries? without any being done to create creativity or love of learning. We do not want to squash love of learning. And number three, how can any test predict global competitiveness or economic growth? A general question that can be asked, given Dr. Thompson's warning concerning the Common Core test, is will it be a risk or an asset to my child's brain development. So all you are listening today, let's come together in knowledge, action, and voices for education. Common Core high-stake testing cost, but what is the price we want to pay? And we have to remember, and I need to bring this to your attention, just last night, we got a federal flash from the Alliance from Excellent Education. And it noted that two senators, the Senate Education Committee Chair, Lamar Alexander, a Republican out of Tennessee, and the ranking member, Patty Murray, a Democrat out of Washington, 
they have proposed a bipartisan bill to fix No Child Left Behind. But here again, even fixing No Child Left Behind, that still means there is government intrusion. We need people who respect the Constitution. Remember about two programs ago, I reminded you that Amendment 10 of the U.S. Constitution guarantees that states have sovereignty over the education of their children. And the 1965 Elementary and Secondary Education Act, which is a federal law, forbids the setting up of a national curriculum. And the National Education Organizational Act of 1979, Section 103, states that parents have the primary responsibility for the education of their children, and states, localities, and private institutions have the private and primary responsibility for supporting the parental role. So you can see standards, tests, curriculum should be developed at the closest point of need in partnership with parents, teachers, local school boards, and the state department. So here again, high state testing, what will it cost? And remember, your children will be taking another test toward the end of the school year. Thank you for listening. We look forward to seeing you next week. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Don't forget to rate us and follow us on your podcast player. Check out our show page, radio.newheightseducation.org, for monthly announcements and other happenings.